some sad news hit the sports world. On July 3rd, Jared Lorenzen, the former New York Giants quarterback, died at the young age of 38 from an acute infection that was complicated by his long-standing heart and kidney problems. Jared was a beloved character in the sports world, not only because of his eye-popping highlights on the football field, but also for being known as one of the most genuine people you could ever hope to meet. After officially retiring from professional football back in 2013, after he broke his tibia playing for the River Monsters of the now defunct Continental Indoor Football League. Hey, Lorenzen, Lorenzen just tripped up, and that was not an earthquake. That was just Lorenzen being brought down by the explosions to Kwan Young. The lack of mobility he had during his rehabilitation process, coupled with his awful diet, caused him to reach an excess of 500 pounds, a number that sounds hardly real. Finally, Jarrett decided enough was enough, and he launched the Jarrett Lorenzen Project back in July of 2017. This project chronicled his attempts at battling obesity in hopes of building a sense of community among those who shared in his struggle. All of this was done with the purpose of inspiring others and raising awareness to the serious threat of obesity. His videos drew a lot of attention online, and by April of 2018, Lorenzen had already lost over 100 pounds. His success and determination were quickly recognized by the brass at ESPN, and they produced an E60 special on Lorenzen, telling his story. Despite his fight being so personal, Lorenzen was never bashful and sacrificed his privacy to provide others with someone to look up to, someone to show that they aren't alone in their battles with weight. Jared told the E60 crew and the world that despite all the stigmas around his condition, he was willing to be the face of obesity, to be the one to stand up and say, I'm fat, and then take it a step further to showcase it to the world so that other people could learn what it took to get better. This was something bigger than sports. Who was Jared Lorenzen? Well, that's a complex question that we're going to try to answer. One thing is for certain, he was way more than all of the viral clips of him that still circulate on the internet today. He is more than the burly left-handed quarterback rolling out to his left, displaying a breathtakingly unexplainable nimbleness and grace. Who was this man that has been affectionately referred to as the hefty lefty and the Pillsbury throw boy since his days at the University of Kentucky? Well, for starters, he was a regular guy, a real man of the people. He just so happened to possess an elite level of athleticism, especially when you consider his size and lifestyle. The Renton stood six foot four and during the bulk of his playing days, weighed somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 pounds. Considering that he was a football player, it wasn't his stature that made him such an entertaining outlier, rather his position. Lorenzen played quarterback, a position that has traditionally been played by people at least 70 pounds lighter than him. Not only was he built much more like a lineman than a quarterback, Lorenzen also threw the ball left-handed, which is very uncommon when playing Division I college football and even more so at the NFL level. What made all of this more impressive was that he was not just a good locker room guy, or a glorified team mascot. He was a pretty damn good quarterback in spite of the war he waged on living a healthy life. I mean, the guy shattered a number of passing records at the University of Kentucky, managed the NFL, and even won a Super Bowl ring as a backup with the Giants in 2007. But to really understand Lorenzen, we have to look back to before his NFL days, and even before his days at the University of Kentucky. You see, Lorenzen grew up in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And as he explained, nutrition and dieting are just not part of the culture there. In a video he posted through his foundation, he talks about his dieting growing up and, well, it's alarming. Here's one of his quotes. A lot of our meals growing up were, you know, what we could put in the microwave. Salisbury steaks, lasagnas, Kentucky fried chicken, mac and cheese. I was never made to eat vegetables, you know. If you didn't like them, you picked them out. So my vegetables that I grew up on was mac and cheese and potatoes. It's not exactly a surprise that weight ended up being an issue for the guy. But listening to him talk about it, you couldn't help but feel for him. He was never taught any other way. Not only was Jared brought up in a household blissfully ignorant of things like vitamins, vegetables, and macronutrients, he also came into the world at 13 pounds and 3 ounces, nearly twice the average birth weight of an American newborn baby. As Lorenzo's athletic career progressed, he began to realize his weight was an issue. But like it unfortunately does for so many people out there, managing his weight and eating healthy in a sustainable way felt completely out of his control. Lorenzen told one story that was particularly telling about his relationship with food and sports. It took place when he was in 8th grade, trying out for the basketball team. Although he was a gifted athlete, he was in danger of not making the squad. 
Heading into the season, his coach told him that he had to get his weight down from 175 pounds to 155 pounds and that he had only a month to do it. Well, let's just say that the methods he employed to get to that target weight would not be recommended by any nutritionist. Lorenzen said that during his month-long challenge, he ate the same thing every day. A cup of skim milk and Wheaties for breakfast, and for lunch and dinner, a serving of grapes. Not exactly a balanced meal, nor is it a sustainable diet whatsoever. But being the competitor that Jarrett was, he did end up finding a way to break the 155-pound threshold and make the basketball team. He did, however, continue to explain that the first thing he did after the weigh-in was binge eat a plate full of brownies, which was a saddening display of just how unhealthy his relationship with food was. Part of the problem for Lorenzen was that despite his unhealthy diet and the massive weight fluctuations, he was still a standout athlete. The way he figured, if he was still dominating the competition with his current diet, then what incentive was there for him to change his ways? After all, he lettered in three sports, football, baseball, and basketball, and excelled at all of them, particularly football. I mean, the guy led his team to an undefeated season his senior year, throwing for 45 touchdowns, running for 15 more. He even earned the prestigious Kentucky Mr. Football Award, a title bestowed to the most outstanding player in the state and one that has been awarded to numerous other NFL alumni. Lorenzen's success on the field continued into his college career, and he was named the starting quarterback as a redshirt freshman at Kentucky. Lorenzen played through a pretty tumultuous time in UK's football program. There were two head coaching changes and an NCAA rules violation that came with scholarship limitations, but that wasn't enough to slow down the Pillsbury throw boy. He threw for over 10,000 yards in his career and set the school record in total offense, pass yards, and passing touchdowns. Not bad for a guy that shared more of a resemblance with some of the fans watching from their couches at home than he did with his peers. Although Lorenzen had an awesome college career, he was not selected in the 2004 NFL Draft, primarily because of concerns surrounding how his game and his body would fit in at the NFL level. Once again, the hefty lefty's natural ability ultimately shined through, and the New York Giants signed him to be the team's third-string quarterback heading into the 2004 season. He was never in contention for the starting role, but he still made an impact on the team as they used him in short yardage situations to shift the pile. Perhaps Lorenzen's most significant impact on the team didn't even come on Sunday, but rather in practice. Super Bowl MVP Eli Manning credited the drills he did in practice with Jared as a catalyst of that legendary escape he made from the Blitz, which led to the iconic helmet catch. As Eli has stated, all the work I had with Jared Lorenzen, I think that was a big help in getting out that pocket. Unfortunately for Lorenzen, his NFL career only lasted four years, and he spent the rest of his playing days bouncing around independent leagues. Still, what he accomplished is wildly impressive, and we are left to wonder if he had only been able to find a balance in his life, how good could the hefty lefty have been? The stories about his natural talents are endless. A former college coach, Hal Mum, told an anecdote to Bruce Feldman of The Athletic, who was writing about Lorenzen. After Lorenzen's senior year of high school, the coaches invited him and 10 other highly recruited quarterback prospects. They had positioned a wide receiver downfield in between two passing dummies, which created what they referred to as a hole shot. The quarterbacks were tasked with firing the ball to the wideout through this narrow passing lane, and the coaches were standing behind them with a the radar gun to see how fast they were throwing it. Mum says that most of the quarterbacks struggled to hit the target faster than 50 miles per hour. Jared, who had just arrived to the camp, was watching them from the sidelines in penny loafers and Oxford shirts, watching his peers labor through the high-pressure drill. Mum says that Jared walked onto the field, straight up to Mum, and asked simply, Hey, can I try? Mum says that Lorenzen then moseyed on over to the front of the line and proceeded to wing it straight into the receiver's hands. And when Mum looked down at the gun, it read 68 miles per hour. No warm-up and donning penny loafers and street clothes, it just didn't matter. Lorenzen had a gift, a gift that carried him to an NFL career in spite of himself and his lifestyle, but a gift that also blinded him from the very real danger that he was putting himself in. So, it was Jarrett Lorenzen. He was many things. Flawed, certainly, but all in all, a hell of a competitor and a hell of a person. He was the boy that dropped 20 pounds in a month to make the basketball team by only eating grapes and Wheaties. He was a team that won Kentucky's Mr. Football Award and earned the right to play the hometown hero in Lexington for the Wildcats. He was the man that refused to take no for an answer and found a way to contribute to a Super Bowl winning team, even if his eating disorder limited his ability to perform on the field. He was the man that had such an undying passion for the game of football 
that he played for teams like the Kentucky Horsemen, the Northern Kentucky River Monsters, and the Owensboro Rage. Not exactly household names. He was the man who took his curse, his battle, and he put it out there for the whole world to see. Not for the clicks, not for the money, but in the hopes of bettering his life and bettering the lives of those who shared his struggle. He is the man who accomplished his goals, losing over 100 pounds and positively impacting so many lives around the world through his platform. And sadly, he was the man who, after all of that fighting, was taken away from us at only 38 years old due to complications caused by the damage that his weight had done to his body. Jared Lorenzen's story is a humbling reminder of how important the decisions we make every single day are. And regardless of your personal struggle, there's a lot to be learned from him. He will be missed.